obviously certain ads have been denied like at the Super Bowl right people try to buy ads and they're denied because they're considered against like the general welfare of a, of a place what's happening is that in New York City they are showing you that they're not only promoting a state of segregation, right? You know they came out with the uh, pass for uh, vaccination. Mm -hmm. They're also having the, you have to be vaccinated to be on campus in public schools, et cetera. They're having a problem in New York City because I think it's kind of funny. Um, I remember there was these people, and I and I might be getting this wrong. I, I, I'm sounding like an old man here coming up with my old history. But I remember there was this time where people wanted to create restaurants where, you know, you could be around people like you that thought like you that were around you and you know you had the one restaurant for the one type of people mm -hmm. and the other restaurant yeah. for the other type of people and they thought it was kind of good um it was mostly in like one region i don't know if it was east or south or something like that but there was a, a region where they had this this world where people were divided socially to keep each other apart they also might have tried that in south africa i don't know maybe i'm wrong but mm, I, I think they did i think there might be a history in south africa of this thing oh, was it began with a <laughs> Like as such, <sighs> South Africa. Uh, but I will say this. I think they tried this before. And New York was like, hey, we're gonna make segregation legit. We're gonna bring we're gonna bring it back. We're gonna make we're gonna make segregation sexy again. And they went like, but it's gonna be better because first of all, why just discriminate against black people? When you can also discriminate against ideology and black people, because black people aren't getting vaccinated at rates at all equivocal to any other race. Mm -hmm. So the, the, the vaccination passports already keep black people out. And they're like, well, we found a way to keep black people out. And we also found a way to keep out people that we don't like, a.k.a. Trump supporters and those kinds of people. But unfortunately... They still live here, those bastards. They live in our city still. How do we keep them from enjoying their life even more? By using OK Cupid to put up bizarre ads in the subway. Yeah, this is because this is public transportation. I know companies can buy this, and I'm not trying to overhype this, but the reason why I want to bring this up is because the subsidiary company that that uh, I think that owns them, I think it's Match that owns them, which also owns Hinge and Tinder. Mm -hmm. So what they're doing is they're trying to influence dating, so selective reproduction based upon political ideology and telling people not to date people who aren't basically vaxxed or aren't uh, far left. And I have to say, before I sound like a boomer who says, here's what really grinds my gears, hell yeah, this is kind of good. We don't want to reproduce with you either. <laughs> like, okay, a fugly biatch. I don't want to touch those fugly, bo figgly boobies and cankles. You know what I mean? Those jiggly wooglies. I don't know. Those de They're down to your waist. Wear a bra. Shave your armpits. Put on some deodorant, you gonna, disgusting wench. I'm going to cut through this for a second and say that this is not a new phenomenon. <laughs> having, I'm just saying. Having these companies uh, do these things to people, it's actually not new. I can say because I'm banned from Bubble. Uh, for what I can only assume to be my political stances. Also on Bumble, you will have your account deleted if you post pictures holding firearms, which I mean, I thought- Trump in, hats too. Trump hats as well. I thought in the United States that was like a, an actual ingrained right that you have, but apparently not. Because uh, if you post photos with it, then bye-bye for you. Also, I don't. I think, I'm sure that Tinder has some of these things too. You can put your pronouns on dating apps now. You can put your vaccination status. It's really just become- it used to be a lawless wasteland, which was kind of what made it fun. And now dating apps are so regulated and regimented that you're like, oh, I didn't realize that I can now find out every single thing about you when I'm just, you know, swiping through. Also, I would argue that dating apps are probably quite bad for society because it takes all the enjoyment out of meeting someone organically. I haven't used them very much in my yeah. life. You've not needed to. You're married. No, but I... You did what those of us on the dating apps, for the most part, I would hope, are trying to do. They're not trying to do Find it. Find a human. Nah, they're trying to get... They're trying to get uh, porked. They're trying to have... You know, hide the sausage? Well, most men, if you think about it... Mo like, this is why it's very important that women are... are not only revered, but also kept in a place where they um, respect themselves. Because, oh, we're tricky. We are always men. Like, men like, are tricky. Yeah, because the point is, is, like we are so obsessed with sex, but it's not necessarily having sex. Because like you don't like it, people always say, oh, with married couples, oh, I don't have as much sex as I would like. Or if you're single, it's like I wish I was having more sex. Dog, everybody wishes they were having more wild sex. You're not unique. 
the point of the matter is, is that the idea of sex to men runs in their head more because of this reproductive urge. It's a biological tendency to want to spread your seed to as many viable possible sinks as possible, like, well, as possible. And so, like, you have this idea of, like, wanting to get a girl and wanting to have a steamy night. Now, this is obviously, you know, if, if you're Christian or you're if you uh, believe in a moral code, would be considered immoral, but it's still biological, and that's supposed to lead you towards a wife. The point being, though, these dating sites make it possible. So the point is, is you're supposed to be like horny and on edge so that you're looking for a mate and then you reproduce with them. These dating sites make sex about you. It makes sex about your pleasure. Like, you think about this. This is actually like really, really true. The best kind of sex that could exist in the world would be sex where each person is thinking about the pleasure of the other person. Because if you're really prioritizing making the other person feel good, per se, mm -hmm. then you're going to both have your best experience possible, or at least hopefully you could teach each other, I should say, right. how to do that mm -hmm. over time. But these dating apps, like even this, like you don't have to date a man like this. You don't have to date a woman like this. It turns the sexual experience into an expendable, disposable, cheap, throw it away commodity. That's about the best that I can get for myself. And that's why the people that use these apps serially are not satisfied because they're like, well, that person was better at dating than this person or that person. It doesn't have to always be sexual, but th that I had really good sexual experience on this guy. And it's going, these apps have commodified sex into some sort of a subscription of like, just renew it and run up it whenever you feel like. And it's cheapened the human experience to now where they're saying that part of your sexual experience involves the political orientation of the person that you're dating for the night. And all I can say from this is I don't think the company believes in this. Mm. I think they're exploiting human weakness and the anger and the bitterness in our society today to further divide us simply for profits. And it's disgusting.